idea for movies that you wanted to make. And eventually, Forever Fever was the one that you made. Now, what was it about Forever Fever that made you take that final leap to say, okay, this is the one that is that is you know, that I'm going to do? Um, purely that was the um, purely because I think Forever Fever. Uh, was very personal and really was about my own journey. Um, so I felt that it would be the most honest and, and truthful of the two. Um, and, and hence the decision to do it in the end. Also, I mean, although Bird Fever is a romantic comedy and can be seen as um, a light-hearted, entertaining film, I only realized again last year, watching it after 13 years, I only realized that it has a lot of important messages about family, about um, um, uh, the love within a family about tolerance. The, the film actually has a very strong message of about tolerance, um, which I didn't realize when I was writing or making the film. But you know, 13 years later, I realized, oh, I see. You know, this is a film about um, accepting people for what they are and being non-judgmental. Actually, family is a theme that um, runs through really strongly in both these movies. Um, and even though they shared that particular theme as a unifying factor, it was 10 years in between the two movies, despite the fact that Forever Fever was such an all-out success in so many ways. What happened in that 10 years? Why did it take you 10 years to make your next movie, which is? Turn around. <laughs> You mentioned, um, you know, I, I, was, I was living in London for 20 years and I only came back in 2000. So when I was living for a few years, I was still living in London at the time. And I suppose, unconsciously, when I was living for a few I was reminiscing about my childhood growing up in Singapore in the 70s. And I was feeling very nostalgic and sentimental about it. Um, and that, that's why I made for a fever. And after making for a fever, Two, three years later, I decided to come back to live in Singapore in 2000. Now, I left Singapore in the early 80s, so I missed out on, on that whole transition and, and the progress and the development and the changes that Singapore was going through in the 80s and the 90s. It was a Singapore I did not uh, experience. So coming back in 2000, after a sort of 20 years, this was not the Singapore I had for nothing. Um, this was a first world country. We were we were affluent, um, you know, glitzy, um, you know, glamorous, sophisticated, and um, I felt that I had lost a lot because obviously a lot of landmarks, a lot of um, buildings, a lot of things had changed. Uh, life was much faster, the pace of life. People had less time for each other, so it was a, it was a very different Singapore, and. Um, it took me a good 10 years to listen to the stories of the people around me, people I worked with, stories of my friends, my family, um, stories from taxi drivers. I would, you know, in big taxis in Singapore, um, you can you stop the taxi drivers because they have the best stories about Singapore. So, you know, it took me time to try to understand this new Singapore I was growing up, I, I had come back to after I finished 20 years. It wasn't the Singapore of the 70s, which is my own is documented in Forever Fever, where life was much simpler. People were probably poorer, but I think much happier. And I think um, I wanted to, after listening to a lot of stories of the people around me, um, I decided to distill the stories and try to think about what is it about all these stories which has an integral unifying theme. And, um, you know, in Singapore, all media, most all media is controlled and regulated by the state. And really it's the responsibility of artists, journalists, academics to be the reflection of society. Um, so I always believe that I'm the mirror of society. Whatever I put up there is mirroring, mirroring whatever I, I observe. Whatever I observe. And so after about 10 years of listening to stories um, and distilling, distilling it, I, just, I felt that the uh, conclusion was to make this film, which was a reflection of what I see Singapore today. 
And again, um, people may think so strange that I put both films together because they're so very different. But actually the same thing, because one is a document of Singapore in the 70s, and one is my document of Singapore today. So really they're, they're both the same thing. Let's talk a little bit about your work styles and your work processes. Now, I know that in the theatre, for example, which is the other genre that you are so um, actively involved in, you are one of the most prolific um, directors I know, coming up with um, up to four productions a year, uh, two of which can be big musical blockbusters in the Esplanade. And yet, when it comes to movies, ten years in between the two movies, why the difference? And what is it you think that you are chasing when, you, when you're looking for, for something to create in the theatre and looking for something to create um, in movies? Okay, um, I'm not sure if I can answer that question fully, but I can answer it for film, okay? Sure, I think filmmaking is very, very difficult. It's very, very, very expensive. Um, uh, and it really is a labor of love. It's like really having a child. You know, you think that twice, two times, four times, five times before you decide when to have your next baby, right? Because there's so many, too much responsibility tied with it. I think um, with film also, as an artist, one has um, a responsibility because you're putting something out there which may last forever. Which may last forever. Um, it will last well, forever. As much as technology, you know, I'm, you know, I don't know much about the uh, gelatin or whatever it is, but film has the possibility of lasting forever. So way after we're all dead and gone, the film may still be there. And anyone picking up that, that film, a student at a university, or I mean. Sorry, I, I'm also actually quite. I, I also discovered recently that brother fever is being studied at all the polytechnics and universities. Um, I was really surprised. I met a history lecturer at the US, and she said, you know, she just asked 400 of her students to watch the film and write an essay about brother fever. So I said, why are you teaching it in the history faculty? And she said her her class module was about pop culture in Singapore in the 70s. <laughs> so you know, she made everyone. 400 of the students write um, um, an essay on the film. So that made me realize um, you know, how important films are because films like books to a certain extent you know, can last forever long after I'm gone. And so whatever I put out there, my responsibility as an artist is to do, to, to do something with integrity and to do something which will last, something obviously with a university, hopefully, something which will connect and engage with my audience. And may, it may not be successful today, but certainly it is a document of, of uh, um, a period of Singapore. For me also, I, I, I studied history at, at university, and I never knew I would be a, a historian, but obviously for us, we were now being taught in the history faculty at NUS. And it made me realize that in Singapore, where history books are only written from a, one person's perspective, I think it's important that artists and journalists write from their perspective, so that we have different perspectives of the history of Singapore um, at any one given time. So I feel that, um, you know, I told my parents that after I found out um, that the film was being taught at a history faculty, I said, oh, actually, mom, that you didn't waste your your school fees on, on me because, you know, my films have become like history books. Um, and, I, and I hope that, you know, and I think that the Blue Mansion will also be studied at Polytechnic and in US um, long after I'm, I'm dead and gone. So, so yes, I think, I think films, you really have to take care. And that's why it's taking me such a long time. Um, I think it's important to say something uh, which is universal but also which is pertinent to uh, to the society at, at a, any given point, point, yeah. So so I, I, I see that I, I take a long time to, to make a film, to think about what I want to put out there. I, I, I think it's really, really important because you know there's a lot of things out there, a lot of films out there, and not only filmmakers these days. Um, and what we put out there for our children and our children's children to see. Um, one has to do it with integrity as well. One has a huge responsibility as an artist. Um, coming back to the theme of um, family.